The one I have about two years in my hand, I really didn't want to go into some kind of communion with an overdressed toddler. It was not a little that looked like gemstones. Oh, please. I ate a third apple and started on the bread. Texture suggested cheating, additional gluten flour probably, but the taste was not too bad. The baker must have had the patience and sense to let the sponge sit a while and ripen. Maybe I was just very hungry. Texture, I said. Connor showed me a type of bacon. Is that what I would try for some of them? It is late enough, he said. How long did I sleep? Four hours. It was four hours to dawn, he replied. And Connor would be taking the early shift this morning. He offered. Okay. My little excursion to Millersville was to two and a half away. One of the standard features of Millersville here is it made a kind of sense. But you didn't really expect your own your very own um, alarming out of this world experiences to align with the science fiction you read as a kid. The science fiction you don't know in favor of Crystal Hill and the Chalice of Death. My eyes wandered involuntarily to the gem festing the goblet. I had to admit my reading had sort of prepared me for an overheated fantasy like this room. About no as when I was on my own. Connor said this is where he'd suffered any ill effects from his coma or whatever it had been. I wonder if it passed for a near-death experience of a vampire, a slightly misplaced state. He would not able to go out for a in the way. The bread and the apples were both fresh. I wouldn't have expected you to choose to sit next to a fire, I said at random. Sitting next to a fire sounded like the sort of thing only silly show off your vampires would do, like human kids playing chicken in no town. He didn't say anything. Oh, well, we'll play on that and wait again. I ate another apple. He raised his head and shook his hair back in an almost human gesture. Almost. We're not made king to Judah, he said, and I expertly translated the weird in you into vampire for humans. But we may enjoy it. Enjoy. I didn't enjoy thinking about vampires or horrible things. The things I tended to enjoy. I enjoy it, he said. And surprisingly enormously added, it is the warmth of life and the heat of death. Life is defined by warmth to a chilly vampire, death by burning, death by the sun, or the original death of being kind. Nothing had been harmed by his coma. It was more than an introspective, as being in lifestyle girls appeared to be the way to me. I took a deep breath. I, I had had a, a feeling that A was not well with me for some time, I said. I think it was only the night when he healed me, but it took me a while to to figure out that that was what I was picking up, if I was, if he followed me. Yes, he said. He didn't say anything more, but I ate the time it took me to eat a third apple. Hey, they were small. Was it wrong to eat or food in front of a vampire? I had it before, of course, but if there was a future in congenial vampire human relations, there were grave, so to speak, etiquette questions to be addressed. Were you trying to be happy, he would have said, happy opening that the maid had apparently moved to drag it out of him, how I saw her shuddering desire to know. What was this, friendship? Big irony alert. Here are us agonizing over this carpeted women and bond business, and maybe it's only that we're learning to be friends. I could get into fireside sitting as the mark of life too, probably. Hey, you were still a vampire and I was still a human, and there was some other weird stuff, like transmuting and poison wounds and their words will. Not to mention going out in the daylight. But if we were supposed to be friends, I was glad I got to be used to the fact that he wasn't the chatty type. He said amazingly, as if he was listening to his own words as he spoke them, I was more annoyed by the effort to heal the room when I realized at once. I had not, you see, ever attempted anything similar before. As I told you, I had to invent certain aspects, guess others. I am not accustomed to not knowing what I am doing. One of the advantages of very long life, that's the time for practice. I was afraid it's not fair to let you. I permitted myself to be preoccupied. I was sensed by one of Billy's gang. I needed to escape and not to let her trace you through me. Another word that I am unaccustomed to is protecting the whereabouts of a human. Another reason for inserting something in there, 
And I don't know if it's only I or the other one, or maybe you might even still remember. I wonder what the vampire address book would look like. Would it have alignments rather than street numbers? What would an alignment index look like? Could my vampire still another vampire address book? So there are very little persistence, of course, and there are very persistent women copy tracing around me as well. I went with them eventually. It was not easy. I came here, and she found me. Naked in a dark, empty stone room. The entire convalescence gone wrong. You know I have been like that over a month. You schmuck, why didn't you call me before? He looked up at me, and there was unbearably a faint smile on his face. He looked a little grotesque, but not too bad considering. Nothing like his offer as his last, for example. It never occurred to me. I had said to you last night, then I noticed that cold hand was doing. He was a fellow from fire. Even if it had, I do not think I would have done so. It would not have occurred to me that you could assist him anyway. You called me. You called my name. Once. I wouldn't have found you if you hadn't. I heard you calling me. You asked me to answer you. I remember when you called. Yes, Vampire, when you were trying to get away with that again, I always knew the time of it. I was not arrested myself. I was too far away, but I heard you, and I could still answer. You came and then brought the rest of me back with you. I am grateful. I thank you. Now, the fact that I would have chosen to live in this existence, the balance between us has tipped again. I was ahead of the man violence, I said, but I'm thinking this, if you hadn't needed to protect me, it would have been a lot easier, right? I weakened you, don't I? Aside from your having got tired of already bailing me out that night, with the way to go. Where is my soul now, with a pale light to lamp, with different to it? Different like seeing in the dark was different, but differently different. Different in the way I knew it didn't come from a vampire. Is there simply nowness of awareness some good from her? For a moment it was clear to me. There was you and me, there was my true self, and my dear self. Surely you outnumbered the vampire self. One thing that he said thoughtfully. I think your interpretation of weakness may be disturbing. I am looking at fire in that stone. I have been looking at sustenance for a long time in here. But you can draw sustenance from your own address, which I cannot, and you can walk under the sun, which I cannot. How do you define weakness? I was thinking about my experience of being in a race to come back. It was a little difficult not to think about comparative weakness when only one of you could fling the other one across the room and into a wall, and you were the one that got flung. Okay, I was not going to pursue that line. I sighed. He had already told me that he couldn't stand against a wall alone. Choosing a willing ally might have made more sense to me if giving calories out of bread and apples and running around in daylight had any discernible relevance to the issue. Where am I? I think I was puzzled, puzzled in the same kind of senses of different moments, I suppose. This is my home, he said at last. You don't call it home, I said, interested. No, I might call it my earth place, perhaps. I spend my days here. I have done so for many years. Earth place, somewhere underground? Yes. What about the fireplace? He looked at me. Doesn't the smoke say someone's here? The smoke is not detectable in the human world. So, don't you think it would be a lot more than one thing to compare to the other, if they are in here and we were in it with them? The same thing we were to do to yours is that others have done us humans a favor by killing enough of us off, and thus lowering the level of industrial commerce <clears throat> to a point that we haven't managed to commit species suicide by Croatia yet, which we otherwise might well have. Even if I looked at it this way, which I doubted, this would not have been pure philanthropy. Deeds and wares, whichever side of the alliance they've been on, need most of the same things we do. And vampires, well, maybe it depends on your definition of philanthropy. I looked around the room more. The only light was from the fire, and my little vision was sort of half devoured by something about this place. Maybe just if I were in excess. Still, I could see a lot, and it was all for the bizarre. The fur I was wrapped up in appeared to be real fur, long and silky, and jagged black and white stripes. I couldn't think of an animal it might be, something that didn't exist, perhaps, to a vampire food. 
With the Spanish lecture and the bruises, I felt like something off the cover of this month's bondage and discipline exclusive. All I needed was ankle bracelets and a better haircut. The weapons on the back of the sofa I was lying on were tiny gargoyle faces, sticking their tongues out or holding their fingers out their noses. Every now and then they weren't faces at all, but pairs of buttocks. The sofa itself was some kind of purple plush velvet, except that the shadows that were in the lavender. While I thought to try what my mirrors were, I suppose I shouldn't protest about shadows that were lighter than my source, or about thirst from animals that didn't exist. <coughs> My last two days of history in my own mind didn't extend much beyond Scott's and Dirty Heroin. Maybe it did exist, whatever it was. The first could have been bad, but somehow this didn't suit my idea of vampire chic. Actually, Khan didn't suit my idea of vampire chic. This hectic gothic sensibility was a surprise. Interesting decorating principles, I said. He glanced around briefly and was reminding himself what was there. My master had a sense of the dramatic. I was really fulfilled by it, my master had, had, as I used to have, as in dead, rather than undead. Your master, I said experimentally. This was his room. Silence fell. Connor turned and stared emotionlessly at the fire. So much for any questions. I sighed again. Connor, to my surprise, stirred. Do you wish to hear about my master, he said? Well, yes, I said. There was a pause while he read, organized his thoughts, decided what to leave out. He hadn't made this at the last. I was not appreciative, but I was up to his purpose. As there was no going back, I agreed to do as he wished. Another pause, and he added, with one of those more expressionless than expressionless expressions, like his Morgan's doing in my ability, and when he turned vampire, it's perhaps more vulnerable than you would guess. I was dependent on my master at first, whether I wished it or not, and I chose to let him teach me what I needed to know to survive. That was many years ago, when this was still the new world. Week, I thought, three or four hundred years ago, give or take a few decades, and depending on which old world explorers you're counting from, that can't be right. If he was that old, he shouldn't be able to go off in the moonlight. He reached the door here, and I waited to see whether it came, at least not initially. The story is kind of slow, but the old man had a bright brown. I'm officially a big low brown, being the biggest, nastiest junkyard guy with the, de the dark side. Officially, it would still be pretty unofficial, controlling over two fifths of the world economy, presumably, and make our global council into a bit of window dressing. He might have succeeded, but he had bad luck and a powerful and bitter enemy with better luck. There were not many of my master's soldiers left after the Liberty Wars. I was one. Much of my master's vitality left him with the word of his ambition. He turned to collector instead. Those of his soldiers who had survived the wars left or were destroyed one by one until only I remained. When my master also was destroyed, I was left alone. I was lying on the hearth of the fire, Connor forced his will, and as ever, dispassionate. In a long clear range of day and year, I thought of his master in a way, maybe after he got over being unappreciative and having been turned. What purpose would Connor even act for? I was sure I didn't want to know. He did. One question that probably didn't get answered that I didn't have to ask. Why had Connor stayed when everyone else left? I remember him saying a month ago, there are different ways of being what we are. His master before the Liberty Wars, Sam of Dr. Common, a garden variety, will take over Odin vampire guard, and a powerful one of that. So why did Khan stay? Khan did as if he were in the grave now. More questions I would ask for fear of a word answer. But I didn't have much clue about the working range of vampire emotion. Blood lust? What else? Other kinds of lust? Maybe I should have been life lust earlier. No, I wasn't thinking about that. Did Connor really being unappreciative by his longer being able to feel appreciative? No, Connor had just told me he was grateful for being rescued. The gratitude might be a human concept, a flavor nearly to a situation that demanded some kind of courtesy, as grammatically meaningless, meaningless as thank you. But at least he hmm, felt that courtesy was demanded. Another day of birth, the evening at dawn was when Connor knew that he was trying to add strength in without um, intensity. 
With the possible respect to both of us, I did not like where the spot was going. Your master was better in me, was it though? No, those master. Oh well, that made it all better immediately. I stuffed a handful of bread in my mouth to stop myself from whimpering. Carl looked up at me. Perhaps he thought the bread and apples hadn't been enough and I was still hungry. I destroyed his master. It's only the bread now. I did the only the third. Pardon me, I thought, if I don't find this information overwhelming or reassuring. Only, though, and his game. But she chained Khan up in a house by a lake not too long ago, from which he escaped only by a very curious chance. Khan does not play that out by the end, no doubt, but there are other possibilities. Though he was taken to be the resourceful kind of evil thing, and other of those possibilities had almost thought Khan a month ago, for example. Why does Khan want to post an ad in the Sucker Personals? They have to be hitting vampire towns on the road yet, asking for his old comrades in arms to return for a bit and give him a hand. He could pass out the contents of his master's old room as reward, so he doesn't seem too interested in them. If there were real gemstones in that absurd goblet, it was probably the rare connection of death of a lover in his last country. Why does Khan want to play a game when he doesn't want to be a liar or mage? He should have to because he couldn't get out of moonlight anymore. There were several questions I didn't want to know the answers to. I figured out the little fair by going by house again. Charlie smiled it now. Teeth marks, not to mention spit, probably lay at its value. I felt horribly tired and alone, despite my companion, especially because of my companion. I picked up the goblet again, and now I took two hands. Two hands would certainly have been easier. I was just resisting the idea of needing two hands, and teetered it toward my mouth. As if it seemed a long time before the wine had hit the bottom, pouring it in, it seemed rather a while before it touched my lips, tipping it back out. Drinking straight from the bottle, however, didn't seem like an option. Not in this room, in Carl's room, maybe, not too long with no furniture, and no fire. A lot of my thinking there was returning to cinnamon rolls and bread. I wanted an unexpected tour group on a barely short of kitchen staff. I wanted a big dinner party to ask for cherry tarts. I wanted to curl up on my balcony with a stack of books and a pot of tea. I wanted my most worn tattooed arm around me and bow light on my face. I wanted to go home. I wanted my life back. I had been here before. I had not had all that, and I drove out to the lake one night to get away from it. What is this thing anyway, I said, holding the goblet up. I considered it and used two hands. It could be a weighing cup, first prize in the vampire league splits. You had to fill it with champagne, of course, and cut off the heads of berries in the hand and pour their blood in. Champagne or other liquid made a way out of the water stuff. It was a cup of souls from the ceremony of gathering at Orin Hollow. Was I put it down hastily. Just stop asking me questions, sunshine. No wonder goddamn tingle against my goddamn hand. Nobody knows where Arlen Hollow is, and no one who knows is telling the rest of us. It's already an issue on the dark line, but it is one of the things that keeps coming up. Among the people who think it exists somewhere, we can describe by latitude and longitude, none of the possible guesses are anywhere near New Arcadia. But there is no consensus on whether it is a geographic place or merely a part of the ride. If the good magic hand was right, done by plan, the place is probably knew how and where to do it, but I didn't. I didn't know anything about cups of souls or ceremonies of gathering, but I didn't want to. Even if this were Arthur, I was trying to get my master out of here, said Han. Mostly there was some constraint involved. I bet it was. Why would a magic hand or a plan want to give something like this to a master vampire? Especially a master vampire. It was not fairly dinner, Han said, after a breathless pause. It was for it was offered and accepted as payment for a task he had undertaken that was to their mutual benefit. There were some choice to make a conclusion to this task. This reward was proposed as persuasion to make one choice instead of another. The cup carries no taint that might distress you. And the gracious dining accessories don't mind wine glasses from Boutique Central. Then why does it Bother you boys to my skin, I said crossly. Perhaps the goblet was a bogus plan that possessed it, said Han. I don't know what 
I've moved it far. Carl Master has been a very enterprising collector, and I've woken up to the reading and zigzagging to make my way through the spoils. I collected the stone that might have been offering almost at once, and hit the floor even harder than the goblet had, but then I didn't spill. Further back on vampire emotions, if any, don't expect a vampire to understand the turbulence of human family ties, including baby ones. My mother says that vampires don't hear it about cowardice, and how a good sound human reaction to unwelcome news is to try and run away from it. I kept my saddle on, no excuse for this, I did. The weather had been too bad and I had to tie up t-shirts this time. I was going to need an all-weather bodysuit plus a bag over my head. I turned around slowly, balancing myself against some great fur and spasm of plaster that might have counted in his surroundings as an ionic pillar. Carl was standing up facing me, his back to the fire, handled by its light. Maybe it was my state of mind, but he suddenly looked far larger and more ominous than he had since before I knew his name. I couldn't see his face, maybe my dark vision had been further unsettled by my fall, but there was something wrong about his silhouette against the firelight, something wrong about him being surrounded by light at all. I remember what I had thought that first time while we wake, predatory, alien. He wasn't crying, he was a vampire, and his creature was a deadly. I made my way back to the, toward the fire. I don't know how I managed to reclaim Carl as my ally, if not my friend. What well, if it was like there was no point in running away? I had to pass very close to them to reach the fire. There was only one gap among old arcane brick a brack that would let me through. I knew it from the hearth rug. At least there was a hearth rug, even if the hairy fanged head of my end of it didn't bear close examination. And held my hands out toward the fire. It felt like a real fire. When I pulled it, it smelled like a real fire. And when I leaned too close, the smoke made my eyes sting. It felt like a real fire, too. And since there was no fire guard, a spark fell, upon my, fell onto the hearth rug. I glanced down, the hearth rug was unexpectedly unprepossessing. With those shorn and brownish in patches, I hadn't had sparks fly into it before. The fuse burns wouldn't burn its looks because it didn't have any. I felt all hearth rugish. I never worried about my looks much. I had always had other things to worry about, like making cinnamon rolls and getting enough sleep. But I was beginning to feel that a two burn marked, like I'd been lying too near a fire with no fire rug. Did I really survive? Or was I just a vampire hunting? I know this by experience. But this wasn't any vampire, this was Khan. I'd already promised to help him if I could, because I needed his help. No, I hadn't promised, but it didn't matter. The bond was there. I had a blood fire in contract. I'd work out one morning to discover fine prints and cell clauses stamped all over my body. If I wanted a signature, it was the crescent scar on my breast. It meant I heard him coming, even when I didn't hear him coming. I waited a moment longer before I turned to look at him. Vampire, dangerous, unknowable, seriously creepy. This one's name was Constantine. We'd met before. Well, let's get underway, I said. I take you home, said Khan.